Welcome to episode 33 of the Provenance Marketing Show. I'm your host, Ryan Jennings, and look what we've got. We've got products sent in, but we've also got some of our own. We're back into the merch business for the first time in almost 30 years. These first came out, these are the 1988 trucker caps reinvented for 2019. This was part of our celebration for NZ May Day. We were featured on the AM show and Duncan Garner put one of the caps on. It's not often you walk into a store to buy something and find out that it's made in New Zealand. But the demand to bring back Kiwi made products is on the rise and today is Buy New Zealand May Day. If the hat fits, wear it, they say. So joining us now is Buy New Zealand Made Executive Director Ryan Jennings. Ryan, do they make good hats in New Zealand these days? They do. Uh, that one you're wearing there was one of the originals that was first put out as part of the merch back in 1988. And thanks to the company Hills Hats in Wellington, they've helped bring it back. Wow, they must they must be popular because retro, isn't it? Is that what you'd call it? Is retro, it? like we remember it if, yes. if you are over kind of 30, 40 years old. But yes. anyone who's under 18 at the moment, yes. It wasn't even around in the 20th century when this campaign was launched. But they would love the, the but those young people, would, I bet you they would love this hat. New Zealand Made Day was all about giving manufacturers the opportunity to feature their products, give deals and discounts to New Zealand consumers through nzmadeday.nz. Thanks to Hills Hats, who manufactured both of these caps for us. And thanks again to Katmandu, who have brought some of their manufacturing back to New Zealand. This is their... Um, their Kathmandu NZ made, it's 100% merino. This is New Zealand merino. This isn't a blend of overseas merino and New Zealand merino. This is 100% from farms in the South Island, then milled, ready for Hills Hats to manufacture, cut and put together the cap. And then thanks very much to Jim, who hand painted each of these little Kiwis into the badge that subtly put onto this cap. The link to buy these is a special link. It is bit.ly forward slash NZ made merch and you can buy the Merino caps or the 1988 trucker caps there uh, while stocks last. We've only got a hundred of each. Right, next up is a company called Backcountry Cuisine. Uh, they manufacture freeze dried products for outdoor adventurers. So if you're out on an adventure a long way from your local supermarket or dairy you're going to need food where do you get that food you're going to bring it in with you problem with bringing it in with you is it's heavy if you're out for three or four days it's starting to weigh you down you might bring out three four kilos of food it's going to be heavy so what they these guys do is freeze-dried food that takes out a lot of the water content that you can re-add in when you get to uh, wherever you're camping or wherever your hut is overnight. This one here is spaghetti bolognese. Uh, they've got another flavor here of roast lamb and vegetables. Another one, chicken cabanara. These are all the most popular ones. And the good thing about these is I'm actually gonna be taking these on a trip of my own, heading down uh, with my girlfriend to Kepler Track down in the bottom of the South Island. And I'm gonna try some of these apple pie, freeze dried apple pie. I don't know how they do that, but we're gonna work it out. Interestingly, with this particular business, they've just upgraded their brand. This is yogurt and muesli. I'm definitely gonna be eating that. They've got the Kiwi trademark there, reversed white on their background. Beautifully subtle, nice and modern, far better than, in my personal opinion, the old triangle. This is a bit more subtle, a bit more classy. Nice thing about the packaging, you open it up here, add your water, 15 minutes later, it's ready and then you cut it across here and to create the bowl and you eat it straight from the package. So you don't need to bring even pots and pans with you. Who wants to bring the kitchen when you can eat straight from the pack? That's all we've got in terms of products. A couple of smoothies there as well. I'll let you know uh, what they're like. In terms of what we've been up to, uh, I thought I'd just give you a bit of a review for New Zealand Made for the entire year. So we're almost at the end of the year, start of December. What have we been doing all year? couple of things, more than a couple, about a dozen. The license management platform, we've upgraded it substantially this year. We've added the custom URL feature where businesses get a buynz.org.nz forward slash backcountry cuisine. 
where it lists all of their licensed products. That's been rolled out to all of our 1200 businesses. We have an API integration with the New Zealand business number so that we can check if a business is registered, if it's active, and what their manufacturing address is to make sure it's still in New Zealand. We've got a website widget, so if you go onto backcountrycuisine.co.nz, you'll see in the bottom right hand corner, they've got this little widget, which is more than the logo, it actually has their license number there as well. Super important because that then links through to their custom URL. Without any web development needed, uh, or web coding, we give the code, it's super easy to use. Then, of course, this show, we're up to episode 33, it was launched in 2019, the Making It New Zealand series. We've up to, I think it's episode 56 now. That's a paid activity for New Zealand manufacturers and those that are participating also get a feature across all of our channels, which I'm sure you have seen. Uh, we have also launched New Zealand May Day, which I've already talked about, the Kiwi Branding Edge Book, which is here, uh, which I've certainly talked about a number of times. Uh, we've also redesigned the entire welcome pack. So if you're a new license holder, we send this out to you. And previously it was a red courier bag, so no one could see what was inside. Why would you do that as a business? I don't know. Finally got around to redesigning the whole thing. So now it says official New Zealand made license holder. It's got the iconic Kiwi there on its own, surrounded by the contour lines of the land. And inside, Whitaker's Bar. Gotta have Whitaker's Bar, something to taste. Uh, we've got the resin style um, postcards that you can just flip through and go, okay, what do I wanna do here? Uh, there's a 10 mil label, great. Uh, 25 mil label and these are two scales you can go okay that's what we want 40 mil label $16 plus just per thousand this is the size also a bit of merch coaster made out of Paulania wood Polonia wood I think it's called from Tapuna um, design who has done that for us sustainably sourced as we shift more to sustainable solutions so that has been our year I think that's all of the main things we have done a couple of crazy one-offs. Uh, one of the things was we launched a beer thanks to North End Brewing and we sent it out to manufacturers who had been with the campaign for at least a decade. Uh, and we're more likely to do some crazy one-offs next year alongside what we're doing with our merch, the promotion of the shows. Just before we go to the end, let's just do that Q&A. Is this a one-size-fits-all cap, like with a strap on the back, or is it fitted? If it's the latter, is there a size choice? I have a 63 head, so most caps, including the one size ones, do not fit me. So the cap is a one size fits all, but one size fits all almost invariably misses some people. So at the back, you've got a standard clasp, a red clasp on, on here. So at the last two, that's fitting my head there. No problem at all. Um, having said that though, Sir Graham Lowe, who was on the AM show, this cap couldn't fit him. It, no matter how large we went, it didn't work. Uh, the Hills Hats Merino cap did fit. This is Velcro based. So we gave him one of the Merino caps. This has got a bit more size to it, so that's still got a little bit of edge there. So uh, probably go with this one if you've got a size 63 noggin rather than the one that Sir Graham Lowe couldn't fit his head around. As a self-employed artist, I'm trying to decide if I can afford to join. What are my options? If you're a self-employed artist, I'd ask you, what marketing are you currently doing? Uh, if you're under 60K per year, the license fee's 100 bucks. So it's gonna cost you $9 a month. That's like two flat whites, two frappuccinos, two Americanos. It's not a lot of dollars. Like you've gotta invest something in your business if you want it to grow. Uh, I would suggest that if you're under 60K, investing 10% of that in your marketing is an absolute minimum. Probably 20% would be better. Uh, so that's like six, maybe 10 grand a year. Our license fee is like 1% of that. So it shouldn't be a price argument. It should be more about the values you have as a, as a artist. Uh, is that reflected in the values that we have as New Zealand made? Good questions this week. Thank you very much for those. Keep those coming. The easiest way to ask a question is 
directly to me on Twitter at Business Kiwi or go to the chat on buynz.org.nz and we'll answer your question on the show. Thanks for watching.